So today, well tonight technically, because it's almost, what time is it? Almost 5.30. So I'm getting some dinner together and I thought, you know what? Let me show you guys what I'm making because it's real simple, okay? It's like a fail-proof, throw-it-all-together recipe, okay? This is one of the recipes that I make when I'm trying to clear out my refrigerator and when I'm trying to... Uh, just make something quick like I got three kids in the house right now I'm watching both my nieces and then I have my son so this is also one of those meals where you can just sneak a bunch of vegetables in there and you chop them up small enough so they really don't see and they really don't care and they'll just eat it so I'm making some curry tonight just gonna finish chopping this onion and then I'll let you guys know the other ingredients that I have this is a whole lot of onion but it'll reduce so I feel like it should be fine all right, so let me show you guys the ingredients, okay? And this um, recipe is super, super, super versatile. Like I said, this is like a, I'm cleaning out the refrigerator. I need to get dinner done in like 20 minutes, but I don't really want to have to sit here and watch it type of dinner type of thing, okay? So I have some chickpeas right here that I just went ahead and drained and I rinsed them under some water real quick. Then I had some um, zucchini in the refrigerator. Chop that up. This is one zucchini. Then I have a yellow and a red bell pepper. Chop those up. I have spinach, of course, because the rule is there's always room for green, right? And then I have some jalapeno here. I have some onion. I have just a cup of water. Um, this is curry paste that I'm using tonight about three, four tablespoons ish. I might not even use all of this, but three to four tablespoons like this. That's what I'm using tonight. Um, with your curry paste, I believe the brand I use is the Thai kitchen brand, but if you use any other brand, just make sure that it's vegan because some curry paste has, um, I think like fish sauce in it or something like that. This is a vegan one. Um, and then we're going to be cooking with some grapeseed oil. We have some turmeric. I sneak this stuff into everything because it's really um, anti-inflammatory. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I have some coriander, some jaram masala, salt, pepper, the usual stuff, some diced tomatoes, some ginger, coconut milk, garlic. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not, okay? Like I said, use what you have. If you don't have, like, zucchini, use some carrots. You know, you keep some fresh tomatoes up to you. Okay, so everything is diced up. I'm going to move this out of the way, and then I'm just going to throw this together, and we're going to eat it over some rice and call it a night. So I got my little, what do you call this? Like pan thingy. <laughs> what do you call this? The little, you know what I'm trying to say. All right, we're going to let that heat up a little bit. How are you guys doing, though? How's your night treating you? Hope everybody's well. Are you guys ready for the new year? Let me know if you're ready for the new year. I, um, if you've been living under a rock, Queen Cuisine has just released our all-inclusive menu. So now we're offering breakfast. We're doing lunch and dinner like we normally did. We have snack options. We have bottled our sauces, so our sauces are for sale. I'm gonna grab a sauce, give me one second so y'all can see. Um, we've used some of them, but I'm still gonna break them out. We've been going crazy over these sauces here. All right, so we used our cheese sauce, but we have the nacho cheese sauce. We've made macaroni and cheese with this, we used it on nachos, used it for quesadillas. We have, um, use this anything that you would put cheese on we've used this for see see so cheese sauce um the hokamole sauce this was really popular we used to before uh covid we used to go and um uh, sell plates at one of the uh clubs out here and this is one of the sauces that we used to include in our taco plates that everybody loved. And so we've also, we did at that time have people that were um, ordering this by the bottle back then. And so now we've officially bottled it up, put it on, you know, our menu. So you can order this by the bottle. And I think it's, I want to 
to say it's like 12 or 13 dollars something like that so that's available but again quesadillas chips and guac um pretty much anything that you would add like avocado to because it's an avocado based sauce um what i mean we just kind of use it when like for we use excuses to use this sauce it just goes on everything and then we have um the jalapeno ranch this is great for salads, anything that you would like dip ranch in for our, um, or anything that you would dip in ranch, this is good for. So like our cauliflower wings, we'll dip it in this ranch, um, you know, salads, all that kind of stuff. So we have our ranch and then we have a creamy Asian dressing. This is one of my personal favorites. We use this for any like bowl, like, um, like our queen's bowl, um, there's some other bowls that we served this with. This came with our falafel bowl, I believe, and some other bowls. But yeah, so we have this one too. So I love that one. Anyway, so got our sauces on the menu. And then super excited about sauces. <laughs> Thank you. We are too. We're super excited about it. We're finally like got them bottled up. So it's actually like super cool to be like hey i just need a little bit of something to take my meals to the next level because it's hard going into the grocery stores trying to find a good sauce like they they just have all kinds of garbage and bad oils and all that kind of stuff which brings me to my next point so let's go ahead and start cooking like i said i'm using grapeseed oil so i'm just gonna put maybe a tablespoon in there not a lot at all while that heats and then let's go ahead and get the onion in there just throw it on in. this might sizzle too yep throw that in there like so we're gonna save the jalapenos for a little bit of flair and then i'm gonna add some garlic to this too so maybe about about a good tablespoon i mean i love garlic so i'm gonna do two two tablespoons of garlic in there then we're going to do some, some ginger. I have fresh ginger too, but to save time and make it easy, I just use the squeezed ginger. Same thing, same thing. Um, but tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, put that in there. We're going to let this cook for a little bit. We want to cook our onions down, get them translucent a little bit. You know, we want them to sweat a little bit, look a little bit shiny, you know. Turn this back up a little bit because the sizzle like went all the way away. But anyway, so we're gonna cook that down a little bit. And then once those get nice and translucent, we'll add some other ingredients. But I wanted to talk about oils really quick. So when you guys are cooking with oils, if you cook with oil, I like cooking with oil because it just kind of gives me a little bit extra, you know, healthy fats, omega-3, stuff like that because I, I eat just vegetables, you know what I mean? Um, so I kind of have a little bit more leeway when it comes to, uh, I have a little bit more leeway when it comes to, you know, eating a higher amount of fat. Um, but when you are shopping for oils, you want to be really, 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 really careful with the oils that you choose to cook with. The reason being is because a lot of the oils um, that you find in the store, so your vegetable oils, your canola oils, that kind of stuff, they go rancid really fast. Rancid means they become toxic to the body. And so, especially when you're cooking at high heat, you want to be really careful. The, as you can see, this bottle here, it's in a dark bottle. With your canola oils and your vegetable oils, they come in those clear bottles. Almost looks like this, you know, clear bottle so you can like see the oil. Well, when those oils are exposed to light, the same thing happens. They become rancid and they become toxic to the body. So you're putting that in your body. That's going to weaken your immune system. That's going to give you upset stomach that's going to affect your liver the whole nine yards okay so be really careful with the oils that you choose to uh cook with and those oils are very pro-inflammatory as well pro-inflammatory means that they're going to cause inflammation in the body they're going to cause that swelling in the body that people experience like if you have like high blood pressure you have inflammation diabetics you already deal with high inflammation uh high inflammation in the body so you want to be really really careful and this is why we say all the time that food is medicine, but you have to make sure that you're using the right food. So for me, um, even within the meal prep and stuff like that, we'll use either grapeseed oil or avocado oil. Avocado oil is, I kind of prefer it over grapeseed oil, but I don't mind grapeseed oil at all. It's still a very great cooking oil. 
So tonight I'm using the uh, grapeseed oil, but I would honestly like limit it to those two. Some people like to um, cook with like coconut oil or um, coconut oil or what's the other one? Or olive oil. That's fine too, if that's your preference. But I personally like to stick with either the grapeseed oil or the avocado oil, just so that I know I can cook it at a high heat. I don't have to worry about it being toxic and I'm good to go. So that's what you wanna be aware of. You wanna make sure that the ingredients that you are cooking with are going to help your body, not hinder your body, okay? So we just went ahead and added in the uh, bell peppers and the jalapenos. So now those are in. We're gonna let those cook down for a little bit, like so. And like I said, I chopped everything pretty small because we're gonna cook this up down for some picky children, you know what I mean? So we're gonna let those get the cook on for a little bit. Just like so, and it already smells very, very good. All right, give those some time, right? Are you guys ready for New Year's? What's the plan? I personally don't have any, to be completely honest. I'm really excited for the New Year though. Really, really excited. Um, just because when I tell you Queen Cuisine has some really big stuff planned this year, well, this next year, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about everything that we're just trying out, that we're releasing, that we're doing. It's a, it's a really exciting time for us. So I'm grateful that we, uh, you know, made it through the holiday season and just made it through 2020 in general because y'all already know. Y'all yeah, know it was a year um, for us too, you know, but I will say, honestly, I can't complain. I can't complain or I choose not to, you know what I mean? So excited for the new year. If you have not purchased your juice cleanses, I highly recommend that you do that. Purchase your juice cleanses. I'm going to be going through the juice cleanse with you guys starting on Monday. So um, if you place your order for your juice cleanses today, you get them on Sunday. That way you are ready for this week because we already know people are going to try to, you know, have their kind of last hurrah um, before kind of trying to get their lives together this weekend because it's New Year's weekend. That just is what it is. So starting on Monday, I want to make sure that you guys are ready for the new year. So it's a really great idea to get a juice cleanse so you can go ahead and reset. You wanna clean your gut out, you wanna clean your body out, have that be the fresh start to the new year. So just go ahead and get the cleanse, drink it. It's a, um, you can either get a one day, a three day or a five day cleanse. And all it is is it's six juices a day for either one day, three day or five days, however, whatever duration you choose. So that's how it's gonna work and you just consume the, uh, the six juices in a day along with water. I can't stress that enough. Along with water, you're going to be um, taking your juices, drink one juice every two hours starting at 8 a.m. and then at 6 p.m. But you want to make sure that you're constantly flushing. So drink at least half your body weight in ounces if you can. Um, but you're also taking in liquid from the juices. So you know what I mean? Just be conscious of that. But yeah, we want to get our health in order, guys. We want to we wanna clean our gut. You know, we want to clean our gut, reset your gut, okay? All disease starts in the gut, all right? So we want to make sure that we're cleaning out our gut. And then after our um, cleanse, we will um, introduce solids back into our, our routine. So just depending on your personal preference. Uh, so it's a fast except for the juices and water. Exactly. Yes, correct. So... And some people, you know, they fast without consuming anything, and that's doable too, you know what I mean? Because when you refrain from eating food in a fasted state, that also is a way to naturally boost your immune system too, believe it or not, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times what we do, I just added the, uh, the curry paste, by the way. Um, a lot of times what we do is we're just eating and eating and eating and eating, not even being hungry, right? Like not even, we're not hungry when we eat most of the time. Sometimes I should say for a lot of us, we're just eating because it's something to do. 
right? So, or we're eating because, you know, hey, it's, it's noon. I should eat something right now, right? And if that works for you, that works for you. But it's really important to make sure that you're not just eating out of boredom too, you know what I mean? Because when you're just consuming, 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 especially faster than what your body can process, you're going to, you can hurt yourself. You know what I mean? You're kind of, your body and your organs kind of go into like work overload because you're not giving it time to rest and digest. And then a lot of us too, we eat so close to bedtime that we, again, we don't give our bodies time to really digest the food before going to sleep. So then that's ending up being, you know, backing us up even more, if that makes sense. So when you reset, when you fast or you do a juice cleanse, for one, the juices are a very, um, the difference between like a juice and a smoothie, juices are a very concentrated, like highly concentrated form of uh, vitamins, minerals, nutrients that are going to flood your body with that in a very concentrated form so it's really going to be like a high duty um kind of intense like squeaky clean type of thing because you are just rushing your body not in a bad way but you're just you're flooding your body with is a very concentrated form of nutrients you know what i mean and that's what the juices are but that's what you kind of need to kind of clear out now with the um with smoothies it's kind of the same thing but you're not separating the fruit or the vegetables from the skin, which is the fiber. You know what I mean? So smoothies are definitely not bad. That's a good thing to introduce too. And that's one of the things that I'll reintroduce into my diet after doing the cleanse. Smoothies most definitely because of the fiber. And fiber is going to help clean the cleanse the colon in particular, your gut. So that's that's what we're focusing on too, okay? All right, so as you guys can see, this is all cooked down. We got our onions in there. We have our peppers in there. We have our jalapenos in there, our curry paste, our ginger, our garlic, that's all in there. So next up, we are gonna go ahead and add our chickpeas. Just pour them right in there. We're gonna add our zucchini, pour that right in there. And I love making curry. This is a, curries are a great way to not only use the vegetables that are getting ready to go bad in your fridge, but to meal prep. It's a really easy meal prep because you make so much of it. It's kind of hard to make a small amount of curry. You know what I mean? So you're kind of eating on this for a few days to come, depending on you know how much veg vegetables or whatever you want to put in there, right? So we're just mixing this up now. Here's a pro tip, guys, all right? Especially for the vegan community, all right? Just because you're not cooking meat, just because you are only cooking vegetables does not mean that you don't have to season your food, okay? I'm, I'm gonna say that again. That's very important, okay? Especially when you are going from the standard American diet to now predominantly plant-based or vegan, okay? You're going from eating meat and dairy to only consuming vegetables. So you still have to make it taste like something. So spices are very, very, very important if you're going to live this vegan lifestyle. If there's just no way around it, okay? So we have this in there, that's all mixed in. Now we're gonna pour in our tomatoes and I'm just using canned tomatoes. You can use fresh if you want, but this is what I had on hand. And then we have to go on with our spices, okay? So we have some sea salt, just pure sea salt. Pour some of that in there. Um, I'd say maybe, I don't know, half a teaspoon, maybe. Uh, pepper, just enough. And this is the thing too, especially like those of you that like to follow recipes and stuff like this, you have to season according to your taste buds, okay? My taste buds are not the same as your taste buds, but I do know that I like a lot of spices. I like a lot of seasoning too, you know what I mean? Which is how I can easily make things taste good because I season the heck out of it. Uh, this is uh, coriander here. I would use a little bit of cumin, but I don't have that. So, and then I'm going in with some Duran Masala. You know, like I said, you kind of let your ancestors guide you to you, so they tell you stop. So, <laughs> and then turmeric. Now turmeric, I like to sneak this in everything because again, 
very, very, very anti-inflammatory. This is really important. Anything that you can get your hands on, like herbs and spices and things like that, that are anti-inflammatory, those are powerhouses, especially for your immune system, especially for your gut. That's going to help in all of those areas. So turmeric, I sneak in almost everything because you can't really taste it, but you're getting all of the um, anti-inflammatory properties in it. So it's really, really great. In fact, I have a drink. Um, I haven't made it in a long time, but when I was working with my grandmother, um, I put her through a nutritional therapy uh, program with myself. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm a holistic nutritionist. So I was uh, working with my grandmother and this is actually how Queen Cuisine kind of came to be. Um, I put her on a, uh, ooh, hold on. I put her on a, um, you know, on a program with me, just very individualized um, approach to her, you know, way of living or whatever. But I did make sure that she was eating a plant-based diet. And uh, one of the drinks that I had her make, because my grandmother loves coffee. She's like a, she was a caffeine addict. You know what I mean? And she had high blood pressure. She was on over like 17 different medications at one time. She used to walk with a walker. They told her she would never get off the walker. They meaning, you know, doctors told her that she would have to have the walker for the rest of her life. And if she didn't use the walker, she had to at least have the cane and all that kind of stuff. Um, she's not on any medication anymore. My grandma's 79 years old. She's getting ready to be 80 years old next year. And she's not on any medication. Um, she doesn't walk with her walker or a cane. She hasn't in over over a year now. Um, she's not in, like I said, not on any prescription medication. But one of the, she, you know, her, her um, she was diagnosed with heart disease. Um, and she's completely healthy now. She doesn't have that. She had high blood pressure. Her blood pressure is under control now, right? So, and um, one of the drinks that I had her make in place of her coffee in the morning was basically, you know, water with turmeric, black pepper, and lemons. And then I think I may have even told her, had her put um, like fresh ginger in there as well. So she would drink that instead of doing her coffee. And so at first, when she first started, it was hard for her because she still loves her coffee. That's just the way that it is. She still loves her coffee. But it got to the point where I was like, okay, she, I believe she was drinking two to three cups every morning type of thing. And that's how she would start her morning. So I said, okay, instead of starting your morning with the coffee, let's trade out one cup of coffee for one um, cup of this, you know, anti-inflammatory blend that I had her make. And before you know it, she preferred the anti-inflammatory drink over her coffee. You know what I mean? And again, it's those herbs and those spices and those anti-inflammatory like pairings, that turmeric, that ginger, that um, the black pepper. And the reason why we add black pepper anytime that we're using turmeric is because black pepper is going to help your body to be able to absorb the curcumin that is in turmeric. That's what gives turmeric that bright orange, that bright orange color. That's called curcumin. Okay, that's the substance in turmeric that's going to help that give that is responsible for those anti-inflammatory properties. Okay, so um, you want to make sure any time that you're using uh, turmeric, you want to add a little bit of black pepper, not even a lot. You don't need a lot. You just need a little bit, a little bit of black pepper, and that's going to help your body to absorb those anti-inflammatory properties. Okay, so we have everything in the pot since I'm like rambling. We have everything in the pot. We added our uh, diced tomatoes. We added our coconut milk. You guys see me add that. And now we just mixed everything together. We got our spices in there. So that's ready to go. Um, I'm going to grab a lime. Grabbing a lime. So after everything, we're going to kind of bring this to a boil. Let it boil a little bit. It really just needs to heat up. There's nothing that needs to cook in there because it's all vegetables. This is why I love being able to... Um, just cook with vegetables because it takes no time. It takes no time. I don't have to wait for anything to marinate. I don't have to wait for anything to heat through or cook or anything like that. I don't got to do all that. Um, so it's just heating. Um, the only thing that we're kind of waiting to like soften would be like the zucchini, but that takes like two seconds. You know what I mean? After this is done, 
we're gonna add a squeeze of lime in there, and then we're, I'm also gonna add the spinach in there. You should be able to add some type of leafy green to anything that you're eating. That's the easiest way to um, get those greens in your diet. It's the easiest way. It's the easiest way to get that fiber. It's the easiest way to sneak vegetables in, especially for picky kids. Listen to what I'm saying, especially for picky children. Sneak it in a soup. Sneak it in a stew. Sneak it in a smoothie. Sneak it in to where they can't even really tell that it's in there. You know what I'm saying? So um, give this a few minutes. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's starting to bubble a little bit. We're going to give it a little bit more time to uh, come to a boil. And then we'll add our spinach. Now, this is going to wilt down to like nothing. And that's the really good thing about um, spinach. The really good thing about spinach or even like kale too, right? So I've gone ahead and I chopped this up a little bit, right? Like they're not really full leaves in here because again, I mean, you got like one like that, which I can like tear up. But again, you're, you're feeding, um, you're feeding picky kids. You're feeding kids that don't know anything about how to fuel their bodies. You know what I'm saying? But this is why I'm going to continue to go live and cook for you guys because we have to break what we call generational curses, okay? At this point, we have to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves and our family. So we have to relearn a lot of stuff that we've learned, if that makes sense. We have to relearn it. We have to change our relationship with food. We have to change the relationship, okay? And especially if you have kids, um, if you have children, they're the next generation. They're going to be taking care of you. So we have to change their relationship with food as well, right? And so I think a lot of people, you know, they can beat up on themselves, you know, because we're only passing to our children what we have been taught. You know what I'm saying? So for example, for myself, you know, I grew up eating salmon, and noodles, hot dogs, and you know, meat and dairy and fish and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, but when I got pregnant with my son, I ended up getting gestational diabetes. Now, when I was pregnant, I was still eating trash. Like I was the person that was like, oh, I'm eating for two. I'm eating whatever I want. I was the person that was eating buckets of ice cream like a week or two before my freaking diabetes to my glucose test you know what i'm saying like i was that person and then want to be surprised when i got a girl and something else anyways so but i'm saying then the day i had my son i was like look you know i gotta change this this ends with me you know what i mean because it for those of you that don't know if you if you were pregnant and you had gestational diabetes you're four times as likely to get type 2 within five years within five years i'm coming up on my fifth year like my son is four he'll be five in like six months so when I was pregnant, after finding out that I had gestational diabetes, it was like, oh no, like I can't, I can't do this. You know, like I'm a researcher. So I'm going to sit down and read the books and research and all that kind of stuff and, you know, take things and apply it to my life that I feel suits me or whatever. Um, but the day I had my son, I went vegan. That's when I started transitioning into a vegan lifestyle. It took me a good six months um, to you know, kind of go full fledged, if you will. But my son is four now. He's the healthiest kid I've ever seen in my life. He doesn't know anything besides a vegan diet. He's been vegan all his life. He has the purest energy. He has the 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 greatest energy, like the greatest energy. He's so smart because he's not clouded by anything. You know what I mean? There's not, he's not full of, you know, inflammation or mucus or anything like that you know what I mean so I'm just really I try as much as I can to not push people to go vegan no like that's I'm not a pushy vegan you know I think that people are um, going to do what they feel is best for them but I think when you know better you do better right when you know this information and you and you have a when you know better, you do better. And you have, and when you have a understanding of how your body is supposed to work, you can't go back. You can't go backwards. When you know and you do the research and you know what I what when you know what I know and you've studied and all that kind of stuff for for you know the next generation, right? You can't go back. 
to what you were doing before. Because every time you go to put something on your fork that you know get, is getting ready to do some damage to your body, you're like, I, I can't do it. Like, <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I can't do it, okay? And it's baby steps, guys. It's baby steps. Like, don't feel... Don't feel discouraged. I have a lot of people that are like, man, you know, I want to go vegan so bad, but I just don't, I can't give up meat. I can't give up dairy. Let me tell you something. It's not your fault, okay? It's not your fault that it is hard for you to give up those things. It's not your fault. Because you have to realize that our food system is trash, okay? That there are chemicals that are being pumped into our food on a regular basis. In fact, the USDA just approved the uh, production of uh, contaminated meat. They just approved that, contaminated like chicken and stuff, which means that they are refraining from doing inspections for a lot of these um, meat and dairy farmers, right? And even if they do, they're saying basically if they find, you know, a chicken or whatever that is uh, contaminated, that has like a tumor or something like that, that they are allowed to just cut the tumor off and continue to sell the meat from those animals. That's crazy. Like you can, they can legally sell contaminated meat to us. That's legal now. You know, but it, like I said, it's not your fault if you have a hard time transitioning. You know what I'm saying? It's not your fault because the chemicals that are being pumped into the food that we eat makes it addictive. You know what I mean? So that when you go to start trying to, especially dairy, especially dairy, that was, that's why I had to transition. I couldn't go vegan overnight um, because cheese, you know, yogurt, just dairy, you know, is very, very, very addictive. In fact, dairy products activate the same part of the brain as heroin. You know, so you know how people get addicted to heroin. It activates certain um, nerves in the brain, centers in the brain that is uh, responsible for addiction. You know what I mean? Cheese does the same thing. So again, you have to honor your baby steps. You have to go slow and you have to say, listen, I'm going to go more plant-based, but it may not be overnight and that's okay. That's okay. You have to do what is best for you, but by honoring your baby steps, maybe you decide, you know what? On Mondays, we're going to do meatless Mondays. And maybe that's how you start and you do meatless Mondays for, you know, three weeks. It takes three weeks, 21 days to develop a habit, right? So maybe meatless Mondays is going to be your thing. But Tuesday through Sunday, you eat, you know, whatever you're going to eat. But that's a baby step, right? That's a baby step. And if you continue to do that, then you reprogram your mind into saying, oh, it's Monday. It's meatless Monday. You know what I'm saying? And then you decide, hey, what do I want to do next? Maybe, you know, for breakfast, maybe breakfast all week, I'm not going to consume any meat products. That's a baby step. And you do that for a week. Just this week only, I'm not going to eat meat for breakfast. Right? That, and that's how you start. That's how you start. But you give yourself small goals. You achieve those small goals. Then you feel like you accomplished something. So it empowers you to continue to go. You know what I mean? To continue to, to nourish your body in the right way. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking, huh? <laughs> I'm talking. So y'all see how this is coming together, right? Y'all y'all looking at this? Okay. We added, I added the spinach in there. I added the uh, the lime juice. Uh, what else did I add in there? I think that was pretty much it. But you're just adding stuff in here, mixing it around. You know what I'm saying? You're just, you're mixing it around. It's heating up. You're not really doing anything. Like, I can do this and talk to you guys. That's multitasking. You know what I'm saying? So, um... Yeah, that's all I kind of wanted to share with you guys. I just wanted to show you what I was making for dinner. And then um, we're putting it over some brown rice. Brown, you know. 
y'all real quick and I'll show y'all how to plate this. I gotta go get some cilantro, but um, you know, add it up in there with uh your brown rice, top it with some cilantro. I'm probably gonna add some of that hokamole sauce. Y'all think I'm playing with the sauces? Look, we've been housing these sauces. Um Brianna, I see you're on here. You let me know if you want some sauces, girlfriend, because these are able to be shipped, ma'am. So <laughs> let me know if you want some sauces um, or juice cleanse, and we'll go from there. Um, what else was I going to say to y'all? Do y'all have any questions? I think I had a couple questions, but I was just kind of rambling on. I'm going to scroll up and see. I'm drinking my, uh, my chlorophyll with water. I shared that with you guys in one of my other lives. My chlorophyll with water. Now, I normally do this in the morning on an empty stomach, but I didn't. I kind of, time got away from me this morning because I had to start at like six. Um, but I'm drinking it tonight just because it's easy. It's real easy. It doesn't taste like anything. I just add it to my water, a tablespoon with about 16 ounces of water, and I just drink it out. It just tastes like water, you know? Um, I think my other phone is ringing. I'm going to leave it over there. All right, I'm going to get to some of these questions. This is done, y'all. This is done. Let me show y'all how I plate this real quick. Real simple. Get you a little bowl. Okay, get you a bowl. I'm going to bring the rice over here so y'all can see what I'm doing. Same spoon, you know, because I'm not washing a million dishes. All right, put your little rice in there. Just like that. And you ain't even got to go overboard. Don't go overboard on your rice and stuff, y'all. It don't even take all that. You just need a little something, you know. You just need a little something to make you, you know, feel full, you know. You want mostly vegetables. This is this is what you want, you know. Let me taste test this because I'm not playing about the seasoning, y'all. You, you have to season your food, especially when it's vegetables. No shade, but kids don't want to eat vegetables because they taste nasty. If you're not seasoning them with anything, they're not going to eat them. Furthermore, if they don't see you eating them, they ain't going to eat them either. Okay? So you got to be the example. It doesn't make sense for you to be like, oh, yeah, you got to eat all your vegetables because it's going to make you big and strong. And they don't never see you eat a vegetable. Don't be a hypocrite. Come on. Come on. We got to be honest. We got to be honest with ourselves so we can be honest with our children. Right? Got to be honest. You got to be the example because they do everything that you do. They ain't going to do what they say. Or they, they're they not going to do what you say. They're going to do what you do. Okay? Let me grab a spoon. Now, for this, when you're taste testing, you don't even got to taste the vegetables, right? It's all in the sauce. Okay? It's all in the sauce. So, I'm just going to take the, the curry sauce, right? And I'm going to taste it. Come on, God. I need a little bit more salt. But the Lord did that one. It's good. I'm going to just pour it in my hand because I don't want to do too much. And you ain't got to go overboard with the sauce either, or the, the salt. Okay? When you use salt, get sea salt. Okay? Don't use that table salt, that iodized whatever stuff. Don't do that. That stuff is toxic. That table salt, stop doing that. Stop doing the table salt. Why? Say it with me. It's pro-inflammatory. There's so much stuff that we buy on a regular basis and we're saying... Oh, it's just salt. No, it's not just salt. There's chemicals in that salt. Stop doing that. Don't don't do table salt. Use pink salt or um or you know pure sea salt or something like that to to season your food. And you don't need to go overboard. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot. Okay. You feel like you need a lot, especially when coming from the standard American diet, because all your meat has to be seasoned heavily with salt. Okay. When you when you start incorporating more vegetables and stuff into your diet, that's natural. You are literally you are literally changing your taste buds. Literally. You are changing your taste buds. In as little as a week, you will change your taste buds. Okay? So you, again, baby step, baby stepping, but change out some of the stuff that you're seasoning with and all that. Okay? You got to change that up. Change it up. So, okay, this is good, I think. I added a little bit more salt to it that I feel like should be fine because it wasn't too far off. So this is good. Let me, uh, I don't have a big, 
Oh, you know, I guess I do. Hold on. Okay. So this is how you do it, okay? You got your rice in your bowl, and I'm using this. It got some holes in it, right? Because I want to make sure I get the veg in there, okay? We're going to get the veg in there, and then we'll go back and get some of the sauce because the sauce makes it, okay? So you just put some on this, just like this. And you don't need a lot. This is going to fill you up. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. But if you want to go back for seconds, you ain't got to feel guilty about it either. Because I like to eat. Okay, and then you take this, and you get the sauce in there, okay? You get the sauce in there. That's where all your flavor is in the sauce, and you put it on there like that, okay? Just like that. You see how that's going down in the bowl, getting the rice? Okay! Okay! Okay, yes. As you can see, I'm excited, because curry is my jam. If you have never, if you have never ordered the curry... From the Queen Cuisine menu, I don't know what you're missing. Something wrong with you. I mean, no shade, but you don't listen. Listen, you need to order it. But yeah, you see how you got all the sauce covering the rice and stuff. I mean, that's a lot of sauce because I like I like it saucy. Um, but that's it. That's it. Put you um put some um, cilantro on the top, and then I'm gonna take some of my parcamole sauce. Y'all think it's a game? Y'all think it's a game? Okay, take some of this. Because it's an avocado-based sauce, right? Sprinkle some of that on there. And it's, it's all ingredients that you can see. You know what all those ingredients are in there. Now, if you go to the store and try to get, you know, some type of sauce that gets, has all kinds of crazy stuff, has natural flavors. You know natural flavoring ain't natural. You know what natural flavors are? It's all the leftover stuff from meat. You know, when they're done separating the meat from all the, uh, you know, from the bones and all that kind of stuff, and all you have left is, you know, carcass, basically, right? So they take that and they grind it up, right? They grind it up because they don't want, like, no waste. You know what I mean? It's a business, right? It's a business. So um, they don't want no waste. They don't want to leave nothing behind. So they grind up all the leftovers and they can sprinkle that into all of the stuff you know what i mean uh they can they sprinkle it into all your food and that's natural flavoring and if they put it as natural flavoring um as long as it has less than a certain amount which is why you always see natural flavors towards the end of the ingredient list they don't have to really break down what it is and that's how they get it into your food that's natural flavors just so you're aware um but you know like i said it's, it, i'm not trying to scare nobody i'm not trying to scare y'all into going vegan I, you got to do what you got to do for yourself and if you feel like eating meat is what's best for you and your family then most definitely you got to do what you got to do baby but i will tell you this your ability your body's ability to heal itself is based on what you nourish it with okay if you are putting death in your body your body is not going to be able to fight for you when it comes down okay it's not it's not going to be able to fight for you so you know, God forbid, you know, any of you have been exposed to COVID or whatever have you, your ability to overcome that, your body's ability to heal from that is going to be based on what you have inside of it, what you put inside. If I'm eating most, I'm, I'm eating plants, you know what I'm saying? I'm eating life, giving food, green food, coloring, color, colorful food. You know what I mean? That is what you have to be aware of, what you are made up of, literally, is either going to help you or it's going to hurt you. You guys have seen the meme, I'm sure. Every bite you take, every single thing that you eat, you are either feeding disease or you are fighting it. So you have to decide what you're going to do. You have to decide what you're going to do. I, I, I can already hear people, well, shoot, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Well, whoo, kidding. Well, well, I'm here. I'm going to have a good time being healthy. Don't wait till you're sick to do something about your health. Don't do that. For what? Take care yourself now especially today and we're in right now it is imperative that we are prioritizing our health it's not about going vegan or anything like that it's about taking care of your health period period that has to be your priority that has to be your priority and i'm not gonna lie the best way to do that is to eat plants if you don't want to be sick eat plants you have to eat life-giving food 
life getting giving food it's not about the stigma of the diets and all that kind of stuff no it's a lifestyle it has to be as natural to you as getting up and brushing your teeth every morning you know what i'm saying so that just is what it is okay i don't know then i have some questions <laughs> i showed y'all what i was cooking what do y'all think it looks pretty good right it looks pretty good um super excited about the sauces good 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 um we talked about the juice cleanse. Yes, we did. Um, yay for grandma. <laughs> Hi, everybody that's on the live. I appreciate you guys coming in and seeing what's up. I bet that food smells delicious. Absolutely. You have no idea. You have no idea. It smells amazing in this house. Um, nutrition knowledge. That's right. That is right. Yay for this live. How did you become a holistic nutritionist? Um, I would, got certified through the uh, Nutritional Therapy Association. So that's where I got my certification from. I absolutely loved it. It was great. Um, and I, I will say right off the bat, it was not uh, focused on veganism at all. It was very fair, if you will, just explaining the importance of just a healthy diet and how to make that, you know, kind of work for you or whatever. Um, for me... In my personal beliefs, I personally believe that a plant-based diet is the best diet. So that's what I do, and that's who I talk to. Um, so, yeah, I'm a holistic nutritionist. I do um, – I'm getting ready to start seeing clients again. So if anyone is um, – need to get my – if anyone is um, – you know, just kind of needing that one-on-one -on -one support, you know, maybe you you want to, you know, change your health, you want to improve your health for your family and your kids and even just for yourself, that's okay too. Don't feel like that's selfish because that's important. Um, I will be taking um, clients for nutritional therapy very, very soon. I'll uh, let you guys know um, when I get that up online and things like that. You'll be able to go straight to the website and click on the link that says work with queen. And um, you can fill out an application and we will, uh, you know, just kind of stay in touch and figure out, you know, how to get everything going. Um, and nutritional therapy is basically just helping people achieve optimal health through a food first approach. That's what it is. We sit down and we work with you. And um, we like it's a team. I work with you. And I help you change your habits. I help you with your baby steps. I help you fully understand how your body works and is supposed to work. I help you come up with a way of um, incorporating this lifestyle that's going to work easiest and healthiest for you. We talk about your your nutritional uh, uh, imbalances. You got to know what's going on with your body in the state that it's in right now in order to know how to fix it. We'll talk about supplementation. We'll, impl we'll implement some supplements. If you are super deficient in some minerals, you don't know that if you're not working with a holistic practitioner. You know what I'm saying? So have you thought about the nutrition therapy questionnaire? This is going to give me all the insight, well, kind of like a, a snapshot, if you will, of what your current, the current state of your health is. So that I'm aware as your nutritionist and so that you're aware of what's going on in your body right now. Because how are you going to fix anything? How are you going to heal if you don't know what you're healing from? You know what I'm saying? But I will say this. It's about helping you know yourself. It's about getting you connected to your body and understanding how your body is supposed to work. You know what I mean? Because a lot of us are experiencing different symptoms and ailments and things like that, that we just call normal. How many of us are dealing with, you know, us ladies are dealing with PMS. You have very bad cramps. Some people are dealing with migraines. Some people are getting, you know, restless leg syndrome. Some people have sleep apnea. You know what I'm saying? Some people, a lot of people are dealing with diabetics, people of color. Black people, Hispanic people, we are the large, we are a couple of the largest ethnic groups that are living with type 2 diabetes. Did you know that diabetes is 100% preventable and reversible? Yes, it is. Don't let nobody tell you anything different. But if you don't know that, if you don't know that, you know what I'm saying? You don't know how to overcome that. You know what I'm saying? All you hear is, okay, well, I just need to avoid sugar and don't eat bread because that turns into sugar and don't eat potatoes and don't eat this and don't eat and don't, 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 don't. And that's discouraging. Nobody wants to be discouraging. People love food. Everybody loves food. Who don't love to eat? Do you know anybody that don't love to eat? Because I love to eat. Okay? And so a plant-based diet allows me to eat what I want. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm still over here eating crab cakes and tacos and burgers and burritos and all that kind of stuff. It's just made with better ingredients. And that's how Queen Cuisine got started. Showing people, that's what Queen Cuisine meal prep is. It's showing people that you can still eat what you want to eat. It's just made with better ingredients. We got enchiladas on the menu this week. Enchiladas. You like enchiladas? Because I like enchiladas. You know what I'm saying? You can still eat that stuff. It's just made with better ingredients. So, like I said, I'll keep you guys posted on um, when that comes to be. So, you can apply to work with me one-on-one -on -one and all of that stuff. Um, and just kind of go from there. Brianna says, definitely thinking about going vegan, but I need to get my mind prepared. Absolutely. It starts in the mind first. It starts in the mind first. You got to get your mind right. If you don't get your mind right, if, if you don't believe that you can do it, you're not going to be able to do it. Plain and simple. If you don't believe that you can do this, you will not be able to do it. So whether you think you can or you think you cannot, you are right. You're right. Either way. You have to realize there's so much power in your thoughts. There's so much power in your mind. I had a podcast episode on that that I might post later. And it was about, you know, just the power of using your mind and stuff like that. I'll have to share that with you guys. But absolutely. Um... Got to change my whole regimen now. Uh, baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. You got to start small, y'all. Because it's easy. It's easy to get to feel guilty about this. It's really easy to feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. But now that you know, you got you, you to gotta align yourself with what you know now. You know what I'm saying? Do you recommend juicing to cleanse your body before you go vegan? It's not 100% necessary. Is it helpful? After coming from the standard American diet, absolutely, 100%. But it's not the end-all, be-all, you know what I mean? That you don't absolutely have to, no. It's beneficial, yes, but you do not have to, no. Um, just incorporating more whole foods into your diet is going to help you, period. Because the more vegetables that you consume, the more whole grains, the more nuts and seeds, the more, you know, that kind of stuff, it's going to help you anyway. It's going to help cleanse your body anyway. So whether or not you decide to do a juice fast or a fast in general before transitioning to a vegan lifestyle, I didn't do that. I didn't do a cleanse before I went vegan. I just made up in my mind that I was vegan now or going, you know, transitioning into a plant-based diet. And that's what I did. I didn't do any type of cleanse or anything like that. I just started incorporating more leafy greens and vegetables and fruit and all that kind of stuff into my body. And that's how it is. I, I don't get sick. You know what I mean? My family doesn't get sick. We're very healthy. Not to, now, don't twist my words around. I'm not saying that if you go vegan, you'll never get sick because that's not the truth. I'm going to keep it all the way real with y'all. That's not the truth. But it will impact your body's ability to heal faster, if that makes sense. Hopefully, y'all get where I'm coming from. So, um, you know, when my son was, I think my son hasn't been sick since he was like maybe two. And when he's four now, so when he, and when he was two, anytime that he did get sick, it lasted maybe 48 hours and it was done. You know what I'm saying? Because he has good stuff and he was breast, breastfed and all that kind of stuff. So that's the link in the, in the understanding that you have to have as well you know, for all my breastfeeding moms and stuff like that, what you put into your body is going right to that baby. If you're breastfeeding or even if you're pregnant, you know what I'm saying? You're doing, you're going through something very, very powerful. And so everything that you put within yourself is going to go to your kid. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't want your child to be, uh, you know, born with illnesses or sensitivities or things like that. You know what I'm saying? So you want to just do the best that you can to nourish yourself um, as best as you can. Uh, anything else, anything else, when we come down there, we're going to eat good. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, let's see how you hit the Mariah Carey notes. I'd be so excited about food. I'd be squealing y'all. I'd be doing all kinds of stuff. Cause I love food. I get excited about cooking. Cooking makes me so happy. I don't think y'all understand. Like. I love food. I love food. So, and I love food that tastes good. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I don't, you know? Um, 
slap me a bowl through the phone. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish it was that simple. Uh, I had really bad migraines before changing your diet. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Work on the mental. Absolutely. Uh, eating a whole food plant-based diet will kill candida so that the nutrients and blood flow can get to the brain. Absolutely. And other parts of the body, which helps us think better. Absolutely. Y'all got it. There's nothing else that needs to be said. Y'all are in it. Y'all got this. Y'all already know. It's, all, it's that inflammation. I'm telling you, you got to start thinking about food as information. Food is information. It's not just this stuff that tastes good and makes us feel good, right? Because if that was the case, I'd be eating Kit Kats, you know, an ice cream all day, every day, okay? But food is information. You got to remember that food is information. So everything that you put into your body is telling your body what to do. It's telling your body what to do, okay? You got to you gotta know that. You got to, you have to recognize that. So when you, there you go. When you, um, you know, eat a bag of Lay's potato chips, Check in with yourself. See how you're feeling after you eat the potato chips because your body's going to let you know. Your body is going to let you know. We think all the time that these different, you know, symptoms that we're having, whether it's migraines or a stomach ache or, you know, cramps or whatever have you, sleep apnea, all that. We think that it's just, you know, oh, my body just does that all the time. It's been like that, all, you know, for years. It's just, it's just what it does after I eat like, potato chips. No, no. Your body is trying to tell you something. Your body is trying to communicate with you. So that's what people mean when they say you got to listen to your body. What's happening with your body? What, what's happening physically with your body? What is your body trying to communicate? You know, are you hurting? What kind of, how, what kind of pain are you feeling? For people that work out, if you do a million push-ups and your shoulders are hurting, that tells you you just did some push-ups. That's the connection. Okay, my shoulders are hurting. Why? I just did a hundred push-ups yesterday. Your body's telling you, you know what I'm saying? But if you didn't do 100 push-ups and you got, you know, lower back pain and all that kind of stuff, you might need to investigate that. You know what I mean? But listen to your body. I, I encourage you guys to listen to your body. I'm going to um, start going live more often with you guys. Like, you guys have seen my face like three days this week. It's kind of crazy. Um, well, not even this week, but three days within the last week. Um, so I'm going to just start, you know, popping in, sharing some information with you guys, cooking, showing you how easy stuff like this can be, you know, hope you guys have a great night. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your questions. Um, I'm going to go eat this curry because, you know, I'm hungry and hopefully when my husband gets home, he can have some. So, all right. I will catch you guys later. Um, if you're just joining us, Hey, mama P. Um, if you are just joining us, uh, this will be available on my news feed in a little bit. So uh, you guys can check it out there. Love you guys. Have a good night.